going to be talking a lot about trust, right? Trust. Okay, so that's going to be the next, over the next month, okay? So, who in here likes camping? I'm supposed to tell y'all I do, but yes, I love camping. I love this, the crisp air. I love the fire pit, roasting marshmallows, sleeping in a... Is it a hammock? What do you call the thing? Yeah. Ties on the trees. Is that a hammock? Yeah. Sleeping in the hammock or on, we, we, when we camp, we camp. We would put sleep in the back of the truck. Weird, huh? Kind of weird, right? No, that's safe. That's safe. That's safe. Yeah. Safer really awesome. than here. But I get too hot in like a camper. You know, just too hot in a camper. Sleeping bag, forget that. I can't sleep in those sleeping bags. Unless it's a hard flight. It cools you all kind of sleeping bag. Sleep on the ground? That's how they do it in the military. Uh, well, we're not in so you have to worry about raccoons, but all that. Never, never mind. I do like being out there. I like being out there in the morning. I like camping and being out there in the morning. You wake up, crisp air. So that reminds me of a little game I like to play. Okay, who wants to play a game? I think we're all good. All right. So I need Tanya, Tiffany, come here. We'll show you how to play. All right. This this called Tanya. Tanya, come here. That's what the game's right. called. That's what we're So this is called. We're gonna play a little game called Bird on a Perch. Has anybody ever played that before? No. Oh, all right. So taking the elements. That's part of that mind. All right. So this is our perch. Tiffany's a perch. Okay. Now Tanya's a little bird. All right, she's a crow. All right. All right I don't like birds. Now put your arm like that. So this is a bird on a perch. Now by themselves, step out. This is a perch. This is a bird. So we're gonna walk around like this. We're gonna mix it up. And I'm like bird on a perch, like that. And you gotta get sit down like that. Okay. Let me find your partner. Right? You gotta have to find your partner. But I like, we like putting a little wrinkle in it here, right? Okay. So, your first partner, let's put all the girls over here and all the guys over here. Let's start right there. Let's get out here. The boys let me down again. I want the four, five, six boys to be my partners so y'all can let me down one last time. All right. Every week. All right. Every week. All right. Here we go. We got a special treat today. Everybody give it up for Mr. Corey. Bring it up. Yeah. Oh, my Boom. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Hi, Aspen. Hi, Corey. How are you doing today? I'm good. Do you think if I held out two batteries like this, there'd be two more that magically appeared? No. No? no. All right, I'm going to close my eyes. And we'll see. Ready? Oh, my goodness. Magic. Hey, I got a question for you, and this is a question that you could talk to your neighbor about real quick. But I'm curious, what are some things that you trust? What are some things that you can depend on? What are some things out there that are just so I don't know, trustworthy? Whoa. Anybody, anybody think of any things that they can trust? They can depend on? You're going about your day, and you're like, okay, I can trust that this thing is going to do that thing. Aspen, what do you got? Your friends. You trust that your friends can help you. Can help you. Okay, cool. I like it. I like it. Tyler, what do you trust? Almost all chairs so they won't fall through. Almost all chairs? I say almost all chairs because there was one chair that in my grandpa's shed that I tried to sit like this on it and I pushed my knee down onto it and I just made a giant hole in the middle. Nice. So you trust that when you're sitting down on a chair regularly that it's going to hold you up? Right. How weird would that be if you didn't trust that? Like every time that you went to go sit down, you did like this testing thing, and then you sat down real lightly, making sure. Would you look at someone weird that did that? 
Yep. <laughs> I probably would too. I would notice those weird things. Anything else that you trust? Other things, Chase? Seat belts. Seat belts. So you're getting in your car, you go, I don't necessarily trust myself at driving, but I trust this seat belt to protect. Yeah, I will trust myself at anything, especially yeah. driving. You all wear your seat belts 100% of the time, no. right? Oh, yes. Yeah. I give you permission no. to give your parents a hard time if they don't wear their seat belt. I did that to my dad all the time. Seat belt. Seat belt. Seat belt. Eventually, you put a seat belt on. Now, cars make noises. What about some people? What are some people that you trust? You mentioned friends. Uh, my teammates have soccer and online soccer. No, online soccer and real life soccer. I play two soccer. What's yeah. not real life soccer? Uh, uh, Fantasy. No, it's not my dad's video game or FIFA 19. Gotcha. Trust my computer friends. You trust your computer friends and your real life friends. I like it. I like it. Other people that you can trust. Gabby, you got one? People that you can trust. You. Family. Family. Mom. Dad. What about little brother? Sometimes. Now, we can trust some things. We can trust some people. And I noticed that everything that you guys mentioned are things that you can see. Nobody mentioned gravity. But I noticed you guys trusted gravity when we were playing that game. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What about air? You go take a deep breath? <laughs> Trust that there's air there? Definitely good. What about God? Trusting God that yeah. he's there to be by your side, you hear him, he hears you, that you can have a conversation with him, you're not just talking to yourself. A lot of trust there. And so this week, this month, we're talking about trust. We're talking about things that you can see that you can trust, things that you can't see that you can trust. In this whole school year, we've been going through the Bible. Do you remember what the very beginning was? Aspen? Genesis. Genesis. All right. I don't want Aspen to raise her hand and answer every question. And so if I ask a question, you're allowed to just shout it out. We don't have to do official hand raise. Okay. Genesis. And in the beginning, what happened? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. What happened with them? Uh, they, they disobeyed God. Disobeyed God. They ate fruit that they said, don't eat from this one tree, knowledge, good and evil, and they did. Got kicked out of the garden. And then what else happened in our, in our Bible story that we've been learning? It's a great big story. Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark, yes. That was the next one. Very good memory. I'm very trustworthy. And I got another one. The boy and the bread. The boy and the bread. That's way later. Uh, way later. Right now we're doing just Genesis. We got Adam and Eve. We got Noah. Oh, Abraham. 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 So what happened to Abraham? Birth. No, that's, that's, that's we're still Genesis. 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 You don't have to raise your hand. What happened with Abraham? It looks like they had so many children that they couldn't count. Okay, so there's like this promise. You're gonna have kids, and it goes like outside under the stars and says, "Look at the stars. There's gonna be that many children," which is a lot of children. But he was an old guy, and he didn't have any kids. And then. God promised him. God keeps his promise. He has a son. Do you remember his son's name? Isaac. Isaac. Isaac Tate? No. No. Isaac. Isaac, son of Abraham. Isaac Newton. Well, the story of Isaac is actually really cool. His name eventually changes to Israel, which is amazing. But this Bible story is huge. I don't know if you guys caught on, but like the Bible is a big book. Whoa, that was weird. And I peaked. Oh, I went dead. I'm really good at killing batteries. Do you think I can do another magic trick? Yes, yes. This time, um, I'm going to set them over here. I'm going to come back, and they're going to be fully charged. So, um, Isaac, we're not going to talk about him, actually. Like, a huge part of the Bible that we're just going to skip over. And so if you want to learn about Isaac, I would suggest, I think they're full now? Yes. Opening up the book of Genesis. You can find the story of Isaac. Today we're skipping it. And that means that we're skipping it like all year. But we're going to talk about Isaac's kids. Isaac has two kids. Two boys. Anyone know what their names are? You don't have to raise your hand. You just talk. Jacob and Esau. Now I mix up names all the time. And so I need two people that are just willing to sit on the stage. Because that's going to help me. You two boys. One of you on the side. One of you on the side. All right. Who's older? Uh, Who's older? Me. me. Well, when you hurt them? 
After what? He's eight. I'm not eight. No, I'm turning eleven. It's turning eleven. How how old are you turning? Uh -huh. I'm already You're already eleven. Are they messing with me? No. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. When's your birthday? What year? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. When's your birthday? Yeah. We're just going like this. January and June. He's order for the sake of this. All right. Jacob, what was the other guy's name? Esau. 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 And Esau was the older brother. These two were born at the same time. They were twins. But Esau came out a little bit earlier. But you can see, even in their birth, that they didn't really get along well. They stared each other down with angry, <laughs> angry, angry eyes. <laughs> are you older or are you younger? <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm older. Older. Esau. Can you guys help me remember for the rest of today? Esau. Esau. Younger. Jacob. Can you help me with that? Esau, Jacob. Esau, Jacob. Which one's older? Esau. Esau. Now, Esau, you were one of the distinguishing characteristics of you was you were super hairy. Like, no, no, super hairy. No, no, no. Like, his name literally meant hairy. He was super, super hairy. And you were like a, uh, a hunter. You like to go out and catch animals. You would use a bow. And you were dad's favorite. Yikes. Wouldn't that be crazy to grow up with, like, knowing your dad's favorite? I think that'd be awkward. What was this guy's name? Uh, Jacob. Jacob, you were the younger one. You like to stay home and uh, hang out, maybe pull up a hammock and just chill. Um, you, you, uh, you like to cook. You had some. You mastered the culinary arts of making food in the kitchen. What was his name? Jacob. What was his name? Lisa. Okay, I'm tracking as long as you guys are tracking. Wait, you tracking? Okay, just make sure. Where are you going? <laughs> so these two guys, <laughs> they did not get a log at all. Actually, there's a scripture that I want someone to read. Someone want to be a reader today? Tyler, can you read out Genesis 25, 31? Jacob replied, first saw me the rights that belong to you, the oldest son of the family. So Jacob, the youngest one, is talking to the older one. And wanted his birthright. And this all started over just this little fight because the oldest one got to get like more inheritance. They got more responsibility. And even though he was only, they were twins, he was born like a minute earlier, you got all of this responsibility. So you went out and you went hunting one day and you came back and you were dying hungry. Have you ever been dying hungry? Like, no. I'm starving. I need food right now. Nobody here has. It's been three whole hours since I ate. I'm dying. My mom says she has to eat every three hours. Every three hours? Yeah. I understand that. Every, and every you've been out hunting. You came home minute. dying hungry. And so you went to your brother and you had this nice bowl of stew and you wanted it. And you decided to take advantage of it. You went, huh, older brother. <laughs> I'll give you some food as long as you give me, I don't know, your birthright. Which is a pretty big deal. Like, he's trading a cup of soup for more inheritance. So, like, if you would think about your family, your parents might leave an inheritance to you. They might get all of the money that they've made over their life, their house, all of everything. They might give it to you and your brother, and one of them gets this great big chunk, and you get this little bitty chunk. And so he goes, I'll give you the soup, as long as you let me have the big chunk, and you get the little chunk for soup. Crazy, crazy situation. But this is what happened. And then there's another scripture. I need another reader. You got this. Right, here you go. Look, I'm dying of hunger, Esau said. What good are those words to me? And Jacob said, First promise me with an oath that you are selling me your rights. So Esau promised to do it. He told Jacob, he sold Jacob all of the rights to belong, that belonged to him as the oldest son. So he did. 
No one? I mean, that's a different Bible story. Um, Esau. Esau. His name is Noah. It's messing with my brain. Esau gave his birthright to the younger son, Jonathan. Jacob. Jacob. I told you you're going to need to help me out with this. And this was a pretty big deal. So our story kind of continues from there. Now, what was his name? Esau. Esau goes out and he goes hunting. Again. That's what he did. He was a hunter. Meanwhile, Mama comes up to the younger brother. What was his name? Jacob. What was his name? Jacob. What was his name? Jacob. I don't want you to forget this. This is a big deal. Jacob, thank you for donating this nickel. I'll put it up here. Mama comes up to you with a plan. You see, the older brother, he's all hunting. You got the birthright, but you need the blessing. You need to go to dad. You need to get the blessing. And some time had passed. Dad had gotten old. His eyesight's not as good anymore. So he creates this plan. He goes, you know, we can get some, I don't know, some animals of some sort, and we can chop them up, make a little goat filet sandwich or something. Maybe, maybe some. Uh, so would you like goat filet? I would try goat filet. I think it would be great. Uh, maybe some tiki masala goat. I don't know. You made some kind of food, and you brought it to dad. But you took some of the hair of the goat. You put it on your arms because you remember what was the characteristic of Isaac? Hairy. He was a hairy dude. So now he's got the food, the meat. He's a hunter. He's got the hairy arms, his hairy brother. And he comes up to dad and offers him some food, asks for his blessing. Dad gives you his blessing. And you go, shut shit. Brother comes home from hunting long day. And uh, he goes, Dad wants to get Dad's blessing. And Dad goes, but uh, I already gave it to you. And you go, what, 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 what? But no. And then everyone figures it out. The younger brother has the birthright. He has the blessing. You don't have anything. You get angry in you know, a nice dysfunctional family going on here. He decided, I'll just kill him, okay? So, the younger brother, whose name was? Jacob. Jacob runs. Run. Super fast. He goes way, way, way far away. Um, keep going, keep going, keep going. Eventually, he makes his way up over here. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And he stops. And he camps for the night. The Bible says that he reached a certain place. Actually, uh, can somebody else read? Someone want to be a reader? I mean, you've already read. Person, do you want to read this one? Yes, sir. Here you go. He reached a certain place and stopped for the night. The sun had already set. He took one of the stones, laid there, and placed it under his head. Then he lay down to. So that sounded comfortable. Did you guys catch his nice comfy pillow? A rock. Yeah. A rock. He pulled up a rock, laid down his head, and went to sleep. Which would be weird to include in the Bible story, but God spoke in his dream. This happened all the time in the Old Testament. I think it still happens sometimes today where God speaks through dreams. And so God speaks to that son whose name was? Jacob. Jacob. And in his dream, he saw something a little bit crazy. He saw some stairs. Oh, no, no, no. These were big stairs. Getting there. Like, these went all the way from earth to heaven. This, oh, yeah. Giant stairs like this. In his dream, he saw these stairs, and there were angels going up and down the stairs. Not business men, angels. Not cute babies, like fierce warrior angels. That's weird, but closer. So we'll just go with this one. And these angels were going up and down the stairs, and God himself was standing by the stairs. And then God spoke in his dream. And he, he, he gave him some like encouragement. He, he told him that he was going to continue the promise. There's a couple of scriptures here that I want to look at. Um, he talked about this, the children, that they're going to have more of them. They're going to spread out west to east. He talked about all the nations of the earth. Uh, yes. That they're going to be blessed because of the children that you have. And then he said something amazing. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. 
So he wakes up from this dream. He's got this super dysfunctional family going on where mom's got a favorite, dad's got a favorite. But man, even in the midst of all this crazy chaos, God still kept his promise. So if we fast forward a little bit, what was his name? Jacob. Jacob had some sons. And the sons had some sons, the sons had some sons, the sons, sons had some sons, the sons, 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 sons had some sons. Actually, if you open up the book of Matthew, you can see in the very beginning where it goes through the genealogy where it talks about Abraham. And Abraham had a son named Isaac, and Isaac had a son named Jacob. And Jacob had sons, and eventually you get to this guy named Joseph, and Joseph had a son named Jesus, and Jesus was this promised Messiah that was with him, that had a plan for him. And so through this amazing story, we see that God is faithful, that God was able to be trusted, and he keeps his promises. So there's a couple of things that I want us to think about in this story. Um, first thing is just our question for today. Our question today, you want to read it? What makes God trustworthy? Do you want to read it? That made God trustworthy. What makes God trustworthy? It's a pretty good question. What makes God trustworthy? Have you seen God be trustworthy? Yes. You have? Oh, I think these are big questions. I think questions like this are things that we need to pray over. I think it's things that we need to talk with our small group about. There's times that you might not see how God's working. There's times that you might doubt, is God trustworthy? And having a group, having friends at church that you can talk to about it, it's a big deal. And so today when you're in small group, I want you to talk about this question some. I want you to be honest with each other and talk with each other about it. And remember, while you're talking to each other, to like listen to your classmates. Because these are the people that you're going to be doing life with for years. These are people that you can be honest with. And so spend some time with them. Get to know them. Listen and share. Before we do that, though, I want us to pray. I want us to thank God for this Bible story. And we'll continue all the way through. We'll get to Jesus eventually. We're still in Genesis, though. It's a big book. A lot of really good stories in it. We won't be able to cover them all, but we'll cover a lot of them. And then after our prayer, um, we'll do some worship time and uh, spend some time with Jesus. But for now, will you join me in prayer? Father God, you are faithful. Um, there's so much that you have promised in Scripture. There's so much that we have seen come true, just prophecies, but also like that you, you've promised to always give us a way out when we're faced with temptation. And so God, I thank you. I thank you for, for me in my life that when temptations come, that I know you're faithful, that there's a way out. I thank you for being a God who chooses to love us even at our worst. That while we're the worst of sinners, you still care. You sent your son Jesus for us. Help us to never forget that. And God, while we sing our next song, I, I just ask that you help us to have clarity and think about the words that we're saying. That we will lift them up as a prayer to you because you are worthy of it. You're worthy of our attention. You're worthy of our praise. Father, I thank you for your son. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen.